I pledge allegiance to the flag. The Pledge of Allegiance was written in 1892 by patriotic clergyman Francis Bellamy as part of a nationwide ceremony for school children commemorating the 400th anniversary of Columbus discovering America. From the day it was written till today, this pledge has been part of the daily routines for school children all across America. As late as 2003, Americans were the most patriotic people on earth, according to the University of Chicago's National Opinion Research Center. However, according to the September 16th, 2016 issue of the New York Times, only 52% of Americans are extremely proud of their country, which is a new historical low. But not only that, but only 34% of young adults ages 18 to 29 are proud of their country. In a time that we are needing to see faith and hope in our country, we are losing it and seeing appalling acts taken against patriotism. Our nation is seeing the highest levels of anti-patriotism than we have ever experienced before. And I believe our nation's patriotism must improve. Today, I'd like to explain how a lack of patriotism harms our country, how having patriotism can improve our country, and what we can do to gain that patriotism back. To begin, our nation is being harmed from a growing lack of patriotism. As for our protests, citizens are burying the flag and taking a knee during a Star Spangled Banner. This all began on September 1st, when San Francisco 49er quarterback Colin Kaepernick took a knee during a, during a Star Spangled Banner during the football game in San Diego. Kaepernick's gesture was a protest against racial injustice and was followed by many athletes across the United States within the following weeks. Kaepernick said, I'm not going to stand up to show pride in the flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. Though our First Amendment rights were Kaepernick's gesture may be protected from our, by our First Amendment rights and more or less divided us further and cause more problems. For as people with a lack of patriotism do not see us as a problem, people who love their country and its flag sees us as an insult to the legacy of this great country. Catherine Jimenez, whose cousin is enlisted, said, It is one thing to feel anger or very great emotion towards an American flag, but it's also understanding context and knowing that this was something that was meant for veterans. They do deserve to be remembered and celebrated. Though the protesters' messages are heard, they might not be followed due to the unpatriotic action used to gain their attention. Out of the many ways they could have chose to gain their attention, their method was effective, effective in getting it, but that's about it. For the attention is going to be on the negative side, which will predictably divide us further. For an idea to be supported, one must offend others in order to spread their agenda. Therefore, the protesters should refrain from pulling any action against the majority that will offend the entirety of them. For all that many people see are vandals destroying a major trademark and symbol of liberty for their country. While unpatriotic actions can harm our country, a rise in patriotism will go a long way in the rebuilding of our nation's unity and prosperity. True patriotism comes from the feeling of wanting to give or to sacrifice to your family, country, or countrymen. A quote by George Berkeley in Anglican Bishop of Cloyne of County Cork, Ireland states, where the heart is right, there is true patriotism. In 1776, our nation was established upon the moral premises that all men are created equal. There was a vision of a promised land, a place where your family or country of origin would have no bearing on your opportunities. This creed gave the Americans a sense of purpose to live up to. It bonded them together, no matter their identities. A shared display of reverence, like saluting the flag, gives us a sense that we are all in this together. The men and women of our military are living, breathing proof of this. The men and women of each and every branch chose their job in order to defend their country and to protect their family back home. But not only did they defend their country and protect their family, but they also worked to make the world a better place, whether supplying disaster relief or facing down an oppressive foreign foe. Serving with patriotism branches beyond our own country, and it will affect the world. For a true patriot, serving other countries on behalf of your own is one of the highest honors anyone could ask for. In the States, patriotism can improve how we can relate to each other and how services can better serve American citizens. With patriotism, we can be totally different individuals, but be brought together <coughs> by one common interest, the love of our country. There is much diversity within the population of people in the United States. Almost all of us, almost all of us have separate morals and beliefs. However, with patriotism, we can be connected by one trait, and that trait can build strong bonds between the people of this nation want to work together to make life better for everyone. 
The same goes for businesses as well. Seeing the customers as fellow Americans who contribute to their country as much as they do, the better the service given to American citizens. With patriotism, this dream can become a new reality for a bigger, better America. Now that we know why patriotism is good for our country, there is one final task, to regain what levels of patriotism and love for one another we have in our country. What many must realize is that, yes, our country may not be perfect, but believing in making your country better is how we can begin improvement. Many Americans believe there's a lot of prejudice within our country, but many of those same Americans simply shout or protest so that others may fix the problem. If these citizens truly love their country and wish for a change to come about, they would go forth and work for the change themselves, not just shout or complain about it. In fact, one day after Colin Kaepernick took a knee during a Star Spangled Banner, Kaepernick announced he would donate $1 million of his annual salary to various charities throughout the United States, beginning with children beginning with $60,000 worth of book bags given to children in Harlem and South Bronx. Another way to build patriotism is to believe in or to promote service or to show support for those who have served their country. And lastly, we can build patriotism by teaching our children and our students the history of this great nation. According to the New York Times, some schools are no longer teaching American history so that students no longer learn the facts and tenets of their creed. A globalist mentality teaches students that they are citizens of the world rather than citizens of America. However, in an article by Lloyd Grossman from New Statesman, he says that a lesson in patriotism should proceed. For what is taught will not be forgotten, but what is forgotten cannot be defended. And then stated, and our time is to make sure that these truths are not forgotten, that the children learn that their great nation is, as President Abraham Lincoln said, the last best hope of Earth. <coughs> If people learn the true values of this great nation and think highly of it and its people, we can all come together to forward the glory of our beautiful nation. In conclusion, our nation is being harmed from a growing lack of patriotism, which is dividing us by our different backgrounds and our ethnic groups and is inhibiting us from solving our problems, and that having patriotism can improve how we can relate to each other and how services can better serve American citizens. And lastly, we can build patriotism by loving our country and believing in making it better than it was yesterday by believing in or promoting service or showing support for those who have served their country and lastly by educating the truth and promoting the faith and wish to improve our country in order for our country to, to improve we must believe that we can make it better as Lloyd Grossman said from New Statesman as long as their nation is the most ethnically diverse nation in the world Americans will regard patriotism as the glue that holds them together Thank you. <clears throat> My brother thinks he is Superman. My parents gave him this nickname as a toddler. After all, he could dirty a diaper faster than a speeding bullet. And the smell was more powerful than a locomotive. And as soon as he was old enough to form words and sentences, it was clear. My little brother believed in truth, justice, in all things his way. This is <coughs> Avoiding Kryptonite by Jake Barton. For his fourth birthday, my mother commissioned a seamstress to make my little brother a genuine Superman costume, complete with a red cape. He loved it, of course, and he wore it everywhere. He wore it to preschool, he wore it grocery shopping, he even wore it to Sunday school. My little brother refused to take it off. So mother, in her infinite wisdom, decided to have six more Superman suits made. In no time at all, my little brother became the town celebrity. Everyone in town knows him. I, on the other hand, garner a new identity. I become known as Superman's older brother. This title actually gives me instant notoriety and popularity, provided I will bring my little brother along occasionally. A cheerleader, who never knew my name before, will now ask me to study with her. <laughs> my little brother becomes more than a small town superhero. He becomes my personal babe magnet. <laughs> <coughs> my little brother hates anything green. Green is the color of kryptonite. And kryptonite is, of course, the one thing that can take away Superman's powers. 
My little brother hates spinach, which leaves more for Popeye, I guess. He hates lettuce. Salads are completely out. He hates lima beans. Okay, I concur on that one. And he will eat any flavor of Jello except lime. My little brother's dislike for Star Wars begins with the Empire Strikes Back. What color is Yoda? He refuses to root for the Notre Dame football team, and he would rather be pinched a million times than wear green on St. Patrick's Day. My little brother definitely hates anything green. Then, things change. My little brother is no longer faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. He is fatigued and bruises easily. He is weak and has lost weight. He is no longer able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. One night, my parents decided to call a family meeting. Sitting around the kitchen table, my little brother started to giggle. He informed us that this is not unlike any other meeting they hold at the Daily Planet. My little brother even renames us. Mom is Lois Lane. He, of course, is Clark Kent. And I am Jimmy Olsen. What's the scoop? He asked Dad, also known as Perry White. Dad says, We have some bad news. My little brother questions. Bad news? Here in Metropolis? Wiping tears from his eyes, my dad says, <coughs> Yes, right here in Metropolis. Dad then tells us the results of my little brother's recent blood work. The doctors have discovered abnormalities in my brother's blood, and he has leukemia. My little brother only half hears and half understands, and he thinks our father has told him he has a disease called Lex Luthor. He quickly turns to mom. Am, am, am I going to die? But Lois Lane is trembling, and it takes all of her strength to brave a smile, smooth down his hair, and shake her head no. Using only my index fingertip, I look down at the kitchen table and write an imaginary headline. Save Superman. My little brother then asked Dad how he got Lex Luthor. Dad told him that he probably just got a little too close to some kryptonite. Life is full of kryptonite. If you don't believe me, ask someone who knows. Ask a widow of 9-11. Terrorists now crash airplanes into buildings. Ask a mother who has lost her son in Iraq. American soldiers lose their lives in wars overseas every day. Ask a young boy whose sister and neighborhood gang guns down. Innocent bystanders are killed in random drive -bys. Ask a displaced survivor of Hurricane Katrina. They know Mother Nature, albeit glorious in her seasonal beauty, at times can bestow a wrath more powerful than a thousand Lex Luthers. Life is full of kryptonite. The trick is trying to avoid it. My little brother, he's an inspiration. When they take his x-rays at the hospital, my little brother tells the nurses, <coughs> Cool! This'll help give me x-ray vision! And after his first stem cell transplantation and his first round of chemotherapy, my little brother is released from the hospital. As we drive down the freeway and approach our hometown, my little brother points to a billboard ahead. The sign reads, Welcome home, Superman! Two miles later, we exit the freeway and enter our neighborhood. The sight before us overwhelms. Hundreds of neighbors have lined the sidewalks. They're all holding get well banners, and they're all wearing makeshift red capes. It's at that moment that I developed a superpower of my own. I can see into the future, and I know that everything is going to be all right.